Hey, how's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Well, we're out in the lake room again today because I don't have a what you would call your typical Grampy's Workshop project. Different kind of a project today. Uh, <laughs> I got a computer here. Uh, I built this computer from uh, the ground up, you could say. I uh, got some parts from my brother and I bought some other parts and pieces and put it all together. But uh, I'm having trouble with one of the memory cards I put in it. It's an SSD M.2 drive. Now, if anybody knows anything about computers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, I'm gonna take this computer apart because there's a problem with that drive. I wanna try to explain it to you as I go. And we're gonna try and fix that. So this is gonna be interesting. So to get started, I wanna open this up. So there's just two screws here, two thumb screws at the back. And then this is just a glass panel and it pulls off. All right, so here's the inside of the computer. I have it laying down on the side now so we can try and see a little bit better. It's hard to see. It's hard to get a picture of this because it's even hard to see in these computer cases. But my brother Steve, he's quite the computer genius, I'd say. Uh, he gave me some of these parts. He gave me the motherboard, which is the backer board down in here. Uh, hard to see, but it's uh, right in here. It's uh, for any of those people that are interested. It's an ASRock Z590 uh, motherboard. Uh, he also gave me the processor, and again, if you're interested, it's an Intel i9-10900F processor. There, I think I got that right. The speed of the processor of the box, I think, is 2.5 gig, but you can overclock it up to 5. But I'm not interested in overclocking the processors, because when you do that, it only puts strain on the processor and the whole system, really. So 2.5 gigahertz is fast enough for me. So, so Steve gave me, like I say, the motherboard and the processor. So that was the heart of the system. But you need more parts than that when you build yourself a computer. You need a case, first of all. That's what this black thing is around here. And you need a power supply. Uh, I have a graphics card because I use this computer for editing my videos. If you're wanting to know, it's a, a Radeon RX 580 graphics card, which is old, old, and low end. Anyway, just... In case you keep a score. So a few other things I want to point out here. These red things down here, that's the RAM. Uh, all computers need RAM. Uh, those are 8 gig sticks, so I've got 16 gig of RAM on my PC here. The other thing that uh, I was concerned about was, uh, because this is a 10th generation i9 processor, it generates a lot of heat when it's working, even if it's just, you know, trying to edit a little bit of a video and the processor tends to get warm. There's uh, software you can get in programs where you can load them on your computer and it can show you the processor temperature and my processor temps were getting up around 90, 95 degrees C uh, which was pretty warm. So when I, uh, when I had the opportunity to get this motherboard and a beefier processor I thought well I'm going to make sure that I get it well cooled. So the, all that to lead up to is the case. I bought this case. It's an MSI case. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description down below in case you're interested. But it came with three front fans and one back fan, one rear fan. Uh, and it had uh, capabilities to add extra fans to it, uh, especially up here at the top. And I'm going to talk about that in a sec. So I thought, well, this is what I need. I need fan. I need a case with lots of fans because I want to have lots of cooling. Uh, another consideration I had when I was building the PC was uh, because it's a beefier processor, because I have a graphics card on it, because I have these extra fans that I added to it, I needed to have some extra oomph in my power supply. So I bought a 650 watt Corsair power supply uh, to run the whole show. Uh, 650 is probably the minimum that you would need to run a rig setup like this, uh, but 500 definitely wasn't enough. I'm going to talk about the cooling. Uh, because the processor gets so warm, there's lots of different ways you can cool it. You can cool it with uh, just a fan on it. You can cool it with uh, uh, a big heat sink that you put on it in, with fans that blow air over it. Or you can do, like I have here, this is the liquid cooler. It's called an all-in-one, an AIO, you hear it referred to as, an all-in-one. So I bought this. It's a thermal rate uh, cooler. It's said two fans. There's a radiator up here. Those two fans and that radiator ought to keep my processor cool. And I must say, since I've been running this rig set up the way I have it set up, the processor temps are like 35 degrees C now. So big, big difference, eh? So it's working good. But what happens with this is, this is a, just a heat exchanger that 
that bolts down mounts to the back of the processor you need some uh, thermoelectric grease that you put between your processor and the cold plate of this uh, heat sink and that goes on there and bolts on you see there's four bolts there one on each corner and these two lines here uh, conduct the fluid the liquid that's in there and then this little gloopy globby thing up here is the pump and then it goes through this radiator which is behind the thermal right sign and while that's circulating through there these fans spin up and blow air across that and cool it by the way when we're talking about fans you see this fan here there's no grill on the front of it that's the input side of the fan where there's no grill the back side of the fan if you can notice these fans on the front uh, you can see the grill there with the support legs the air comes out of that side so it goes in the front here where there's no grill comes out where there is grill so these three front fans draw the air from outside draw it into the box now there's a glass case on here right so we're drawing cool or like room temperature air in here flows over everything motherboard you see there's lots of heat sinks on the motherboard uh, so it tends to cool the motherboard down somewhat this fan at the back will exhaust out the back so i have three fans coming in one coming out before i added this so that's called positive pressure you're putting more pressure in the box than you're taking out but then i added these two fans and these two fans because there's no grill on this side they're drawing air in so these three front fans draw in three fans worth of air this fan at the back exhausts it, these two fans exhaust it out the top, but as it's exhausting out to the top, it goes through the heat exchanger, which tends to cool the processor, which makes the temperature in the box cooler, so that you maybe would get some cooler air going through here. But bear in mind, when you set up your box this way, the air you're drawing to send through the radiator is already warmed up from being in the box of the processor. So if you mounted your cooler on the front of the PC, you would be drawing room temperature air in right away through the through the radiator so it would be more efficient cooling but anyway the way I have this set up right now is working all right and because now I have three fans bringing air in I now have three fans bringing air out so I've got a neutral air pressure in my box now that may sound kind of rinky dink and uh, <laughs> you know like going a little bit over the top as far as technical technicalities go but apparently uh, airflow and air temperatures in your processor is very very important for their proper operation also on this graphics card you see down here there's two big fans that blow air over the graphics card and the graphics card it takes up two slots on the motherboard and basically that's because it has uh, uh, a heat exchanger built right on top of the processor that's in the graphics card now the problem i'm having with this is uh, i wanted to install an ssd drive which is a solid state drive the one that I'm having the problem with, I hope you can see this, it's down here under this heat sink, right here. Uh, this is called the M.2-1 slot. And when I read about this uh, in the documentation, it said, this slot here is where you should um, install your operating system, because this slot has got the most rapid access to the processor. So you'll have minimal delays there, right? And everything about computers these days is fast, 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 fast. So I said, all right, great. I'm going to stick my one of my SSD drives in there. I'll st install my operating system on that, and it'll work great, right? By the way, there's there's three places you can install you can install these NVMe drives. Uh, one here and the other one is down here and the other one is right there you can just see the, the tail the corner of it right there I'll talk about that in a sec there's another NVMe drive right under this heat sink and I installed another uh, 500 gigabyte SSD drive under there this one is 500 gigabyte this one is 500 gigabyte my plan there for having two drives was I was going to have operating system and minimal uh, you know programs and, and whatnot that need to run to run the system in the background and in the operating system and things like that put only that information on this drive i would use this other drive for storing all my data like i store my files and that's where i i access files video files for davinci and whatnot i was going to store them on this drive that was the plan right well when i come time to configure my pc because this was brand new there was no operating system on it at all when i went to put the windows 11 operating system on it uh, when the screen came up it's supposed to show you all the different drives you have in your PC in your PC and you can pick where you want to install your operating system. I only had the two drives installed. There was this one and this one. And when I was installing Windows, this is the only one that showed up. So I installed my operating system there. I couldn't see this one. I couldn't access it. Didn't know why. Didn't know what was going on. But anyway, I, I went ahead and installed it in this one. Now this 
NVMe. This NVMe drive here is still quick. It still accesses the processor no problem. And I'm not having any problems with my operating system. The computer works great. Uh, you know, nothing, no problem like that. So I'm going to say that's a good spot to put my uh, operating system. But I still wanted this other 500 gigabyte drive for storing my files. And I couldn't get access to this first. This It's called the M2-1 slot. Couldn't get access to that. So uh, I contacted my brother, Steve, <laughs> my technical support guy. And uh, what Steve told me right away, he says, yeah, I know exactly what's going on. He said, this uh, M dot, this M.2-1 slot for your NVMe drive only supports 11th generation processors. <laughs> and I only have a 10th generation processor. Well, there you go. Now, see, that's the kind of issues you get into, compatibility issues, uh, and whether or not the pieces and parts support each other when you start to build a PC. So, the thing is, my, my SSD drive that I have mounted here, the processor can't recognize it. So what I have to do is I have to move that. So I want to remove that out of there and I want to place it in the M.2-2 slot so I can create the SSD drive where I can store my files. All right, I hope you followed all that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove my memory, my uh, GPU from the processor because I need to be able to access that and get access to the other slot. So in order to remove that, there's just a couple of uh, screws here that hold the back side of the uh, graphics card in place. This, by the way, is the cable that powers the processor and uh, or the GPU. So I'm going to unplug that. There's a little tab down in here that locks the card in place. So I just push that down to open it. And then I should be able to wiggle and rock. It's stuck. There we go. There's what I was messing with, these pins right here. They lock the card in place. But anyway, there's my graphics card. I'm just gonna put that over here for now. Now we can see the other M.2 slot here. It's called an Ultra M.2. The heat sink's just held in place with two tiny little screws. Okay, this heat sink, you have to be careful taking it off because there's sticky gooey tape on the back and it sticks to the memory chip. So there's the memory, there's the SSD card. It's a crucial P3 plus. Hope you can see that. It's a 500 gigabyte. I'm going to install it in here. And the standoff is there for it. So it only goes in one way. Bit of an angle. You slide it in and then you tip it down. And it should line up with this uh, standoff at the back. Now I want to see if this that heat sink should go on there, I think. Excuse me, sorry if you can't see anything, but things are tough all over, eh? Okay. All right, I think we're in place. Everything looks good there. Now we can reinstall the uh, graphics card. They're keyed, so you just find the, the key notch down here and you sort of line up the edge connector and the fingers in the front and you set that a little bit of firm pressure I don't know whether you heard that click or not but it did click so it's in place we put these screws back in to hold it down and we put the second screw in the power supply has to plug back in here all these fans by the way all light up with RGB lights makes it really pretty to watch and there's even RGB lights on the motherboard itself so everything lights up it looks really pretty when it's running the computer is nice and all but man the lights are some pretty <laughs> so let's go set her up so I've got my PC back on the little rack I made for it little dolly I made for it under the bench and uh, there's my two monitors so we're going to start it up now and see what happens so I want to show you the colors as it starts up but Definitely want to see if we could access that extra drive. So push the start button. So isn't that pretty? Look at that. See that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's worth the price for admission, eh? Just to see those lights. The thing I'm looking for here is 
uh, I only had a C drive down here before. You can see there, close enough. Now I have a D drive. So yeah, success changing my NVMe drive from uh, a non-supported port to a supported port. I got her in there working good and all the lights are on. So we're back together and running and everything is good. I like that. So remember I did a little video here a bit ago about my seventh anniversary and I said what my channel is all about is that most anyone can do most anything. Well, I'm just an ordinary guy, right? <laughs> I built myself a PC, not bad, and I got it working. So thumbs up me, don't forget to leave me some comments, tell me what you think about this video about building a PC if you'd like to build one. <laughs> and uh, have a great week. We'll talk to you.